It's time to take off your clothes, enjoy clothes free living, and join us for Naked, Nudist, and Naturist. Welcome to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, the show that celebrates clothes free living for all. I'm your host, Frank Stone. And I'm your correspondent, Lisa Monroe, and I'll be reporting on all things within the Naturist community. So it's time to get naked and join us. And enjoy clothes free living on Naked, Nudist, and Naturists. Well, welcome in to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, a place where we celebrate clothes free living for all. Hope you have your clothes off now. If you don't, why don't you get that way? That's how we are here at the studio, basically all of the time. And the reason I say basically is we have seven people who work here. Two are not naturists, and we honor their wishes. We also try to get them to work from home <laughs> as much as possible. And when they do and when they're not here, yeah, it's a naturist radio studio, probably the only one of its kind or one of very few in the world. Of course, we don't deal with the public coming through our doors, so we don't have to worry about that. It's, it's a radio studio. And you don't come here to conduct business. We can do all of that by phone and by email and all that good stuff. So we don't have to worry about people walking in on us. We just walk in, remove our clothes, and start working. And before I explain a little bit more as to how all of that works, I do want to remind you to hit up our website, nakednudistandnaturist.com. I know it's a mouthful, but you'll get used to it and maybe save it in your favorites, nakednudistandnaturist.com. And everything will be there that you need to know, including links to every single episode that we do here. This is episode two. We plan to do about one million, maybe ten million. So it'll be a lot of episodes eventually. It might take us a long time to get to a million and a very long time to get to ten million. But that's our goal for now. How's that for setting the sights high? <laughs> but NakedNudistAndNaturist.com will get you to our website. And on there is also our email address. We'd like to hear from you early and often. You can write to me, Frank Stone, your host, or to our correspondent, Lisa Monroe. We share the same email address for now. That's nakedforevermore at gmail.com. Nakedforevermore at gmail.com. We want to hear, uh, first of all, your questions, your thoughts, what clothes free living has done for you, continues to do for you. And if you're not quite there yet, but you're thinking about it, you'd like to try it, you might have some questions for us. We'll do our best to answer them. We are not experts in this field. We didn't go to college to study naturism. As I mentioned on episode one, I've been a naturist my entire life, literally from birth on. Everybody's born naked, you know that. I just never bothered getting dressed, except when I had to, you know, going to school, going to church, going to play baseball games, and on and on and on. Where I had to put clothes on, I did, and if I did not, I did not, and I still do not. It's not a sexual thing. That is the main issue, as I see it in our society today, throughout the world, naked equals sex. You take your clothes off, oh boy, lots of action going to be happening here. Well, that's a darn shame. That is really a shame, because so many people miss out on the joys of clothes-free living for what it is really supposed to be about and that is just being yourself, being your true self, accepting yourself as you are. Not trying to be some Hollywood starlet or some handsome male model. No, forget that. That's like a point zero 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 one percent of the population, and certainly not me. And it probably won't be you either. I'm not trying to be harsh, just giving you reality. So if you're waiting for that perfect body, that perfect face, that perfect hair before you take your clothes off, you're probably going to miss out, and I guess that's my main point. Just take your clothes off and enjoy. When you can walk into a room or on a beach or at a resort and take your clothes off and strut around like you own the place, I can't tell you enough. You'll have to experience for yourself, but something will come over you like, yes, this is what I was meant to do. It's not wrong. It's not inappropriate. It's not sexual. It's just living my best clothes-free life. And it makes all the difference in the world. You're removing barriers. You're taking those away. Clothes are barriers, you know. They block us from some things. They block people from us. And, of course, you know what the whole status thing. If you walk around the fancy three-piece suit that uh, costs $2,000 and has Armani stamped all over it, 
and you're walking next to a guy who was working outside all day and he has ripped jeans and a ripped T-shirt and he's sweaty and dirty, well, he just might feel a little superior to that guy and he might feel a little inferior to you. Close free living removes all that. Nobody is superior to anybody. We are who we are as ourselves. And that's what close free living is all about. So again, visit our website early and often, nakednudistandnaturist.com and send us an email early and often as well to nakedforevermore at gmail.com. That's nakedforevermore at gmail.com. Well, on today's show, uh, we will finish off my interview with Ranita Westall. She's a British naturist, uh, obviously in the UK. She and her husband belong to a naturist club, and they try to get there every single weekend for as many days as they can. If they can leave Thursday night, they do. If they have to wait till Friday, they do. And they usually don't come home until Sunday, just every weekend. And they do everything in a naturist vein there. They sing uh, naked. They work outside in the garden naked. They have dinner naked. And I think you're catching on to the pattern here. Everything is done in a naked fashion. They usually have on Saturday nights some kind of a party, whether it's a dance uh, with a band or a DJ, or quite often they do karaoke. Everybody in the crowd is closed free. Everybody on stage is closed free. And it's just a great closed free environment. Nothing sexual. Can't stress that enough. If you combine those two, the party is over. Now we're outside of closed free living and we're into some other stuff. They don't do that at her club. They just enjoy closed free living and being their authentic selves. So Renita Westall today, part two of my interview with her. Of course, we'll have our correspondence report from Lisa Monroe. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, naturism with her today. And she's with us on every single show, uh, bringing us a report and an update on what's going on in the world of naturism. Of course, we want you to listen to our show as much as possible, every single episode. This is only two, but eventually we'll have five and ten and twenty and fifty and so on and so forth. And sometimes it's a good idea to go back and hear an episode again that you heard before. You might have missed something. I always miss something when I hear an episode of whatever, and I'll go back and listen to it a second or a third time down the road. And say, oh, I didn't, didn't remember that before. But we also encourage you to visit uh, other podcasts that uh, celebrate clothes free living. And the guy I refer to as the godfather of naturism, <laughs> Marlon Brando himself, uh, Stefan uh, Deschain, he owns Bear Oaks Naturist Park uh, near Toronto. He also has his own podcast show. The Naturist Living Show. You can find that wherever podcasts are available. He has his own website as well. And he's also currently the president of the International Naturist Federation. He's been on the naturism bandwagon for a very long time, multiple decades. He understands it through and through. I recommend you check him out. Check out his podcast. Check out his website. And even visit his park if you're in the Toronto area. There are some other shows out there I mentioned on uh, show one. uh, Scott Klein, the new nudist, you can check out his podcast. And Evan Nix, uh, Naked Age, you might want to check that one out too. There have been some others who have come and gone. And the problem with this whole deal of podcasting is for most people, it's a secondary item, maybe even a tertiary item in their life. And sometimes they just run out of time. Life gets a little bit busy and they have to put it aside and they get back to it, or a lot of times they don't get back to it, and they just have to move on. That's what makes this whole show here a little bit different. We are a radio station. Broadcasting is our number one thing. Of course, we have families and friends and homes like everybody else does. We have to worry about that and uh, earning income, putting food on the table, just like everybody else. But in the work life, we are a radio station first. We do other things here as well, but Primarily, we're a broadcasting station, so we're not going away. I guess that's my main point. We'll be here for a very long time, uh, bringing you naturism news and encouraging you uh, to live your clothes free life. As you know, on every show, we will have an interview with somebody in the world of naturism. If you have something to say, if you'd like to be on the radio, like to be interviewed by me, we can arrange that. Uh, Just let us know. And uh, again, you can contact us by email, nakedforevermore at gmail.com. But we're looking for anything and everything. I'll give you some idea of uh, some people we're looking at. There's a lady out of uh, basically New York City. She operates out of Los Angeles as well. 
and lands in between, depending on where she happens to be that particular week for her uh, primary uh, work. But she runs, for lack of a better term, naked dinners or naturist dinners. Literally, people come over and they take their clothes off at the door and they have dinner. They sit around, they enjoy each other's company, they might sip wine afterwards, stand around. It's interesting when I read the story. Uh, before they leave, they linger for quite a while because they've bonded. These are total strangers who come together. They just sign up, pay their fee, and they show up and meet other people, uh, all of whom are uh, nude. Nothing inappropriate, nothing sexual. I cannot say that enough to you. And they enjoy the clothes-free living, the clothes-free dinner. And after they're done, they stand around and talk and linger. And some people start to get dressed because they're going to be leaving soon. And some people stay nude until the last possible second. Uh, that's her choice, of course. We're trying to get her uh, on the show. We, we think we'll be successful in doing so. And we're looking for people who do anything naked to enjoy their clothes-free life. We know there are some skydivers out there who love to go naked. In fact, a lot of skydivers do, if not most, if not all. There's some celebration when you hit a milestone in skydiving. I think it's the 100th skydive of your life. You're supposed to do that naked. That's just what they do. That does not make them naturists. It just means they take their clothes off for one skydive and then to put their clothes back on. But for one brief shining moment, they were in the world of naturism. So we'll talk to people like that. We are in discussions with some people who run naked theaters. In fact, they call it Naked Broadway, and their uh, moniker is just like Broadway, except it's naked. <laughs> kind of, of a cute uh, title, their subtitle. And sometimes the audience is naked as well. Scott Klein had an episode on that recently on the new Nudist podcast. The audience uh, is required to be naked. All actors on stage are naked. Just a naturist, clothes-free living experience for all. I briefly mentioned on episode one, when I was a kid, I was naked seemingly 24-7, 365. I know I put clothes on to go to school and church and stores and things like that, but otherwise uh, clothes free. We had a lot of boys in the neighborhood, and it seemed like every single one of us was an athlete, so we were playing sports every day. In the summertime, everybody was out of their house by 8 a.m., and we didn't go back in the house till 8 p.m. other than to have uh, lunch and snacks. Now, we usually played the sports in somebody's backyard with our clothes on. That's just how things were done there. You know, you're uh, literally exposed to many neighbors in that neighborhood. If you're in somebody's backyard, there's really no privacy in that particular backyard. So we had our clothes on. But we always had to take them off to go into whichever house we were at to have lunch. Whichever mom was there didn't want a bunch of dirty slash muddy boys uh, dragging their clothes all over the house and muddy shoes and whatever else we had on. So we had to take our clothes off outside, hose off, and go in. And it was totally normal and natural. Nothing inappropriate ever, not even close, not even a thought. Then we go back outside, put our clothes back on, and continue playing sports until it came time to go swimming. And then the clothes came off again. And I guess we forgot <laughs> or didn't care about the fact that neighbors could see but that's what enjoying your clothes free life is all about. No worries, no cares. Being a lifelong naturist, I still never went to my first naturist resort until I was in my mid to late 30s. No particular reason. It just wasn't my bag back then. I enjoyed being uh, living my clothes free life at home and outside and tending to the garden and so on and so forth. But I went to my first naturist resort, as I mentioned, mid to late 30s, took my clothes off at the pool, and instantly, and I do mean instantly, it came over me, like, why didn't I do this before? I'm outside at a park, you know, billions of trees, there was a lake nearby, other amenities, and I knew that I was at home. This is where I need to be every day. Of course, it was impossible. It was an hour and a half from my home. And I was doing other things for work at the time. And it just wasn't possible to be there every day. It was hard to even get there at all. Uh, but I managed to do so a few times a year just to experience the joys of social naturism. It's one thing to be naked in your house. And that is wonderful. And that is great. And I think you should do it all the time. It's a little higher elevation if you're naked outside. If you are attending to your garden, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. 
I remember one time I had to go see, uh, I called the college professor of one of my sons and said, now I'd like to talk to you about some things. Not, not related to my son, by the way. It was uh, about a position at the university. And he said, well, I'm kind of busy this week. Why don't you just pop over to my house on Saturday morning? Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's fine. I didn't know him uh, very well. He didn't know me very well, but he knew my son. So, yeah, I know your son. Just come on over. My address is whatever. So I showed up, and I found him cutting the grass in the backyard totally naked. Had no clothes on. In fact, he told me when I came over, he goes, just come around to the back. I'll probably be outside working. Yeah, okay. So in my head, I pictured, uh, you know, a guy maybe in blue jeans and a T-shirt or shorts and a T-shirt planting flowers, cutting grass. No, no, he was 100% naked. And at first, my first reaction, even me, a lifelong naturist, I thought, what the heck is this? <laughs> but then I quickly realized, oh no, he's, there's nothing inappropriate. This is the guy in his element. It's his home. He enjoys clothes free living. And we stood there in his backyard and had a pretty good conversation for a few minutes. And then he asked me if, you know, do you want something to drink? I have some iced tea or whatever he offered. And we ended up sitting down and talking for quite a while. And yes, before you ask the question, uh, yeah, I took my clothes off too. I came out in conversation. I said, so I'm guessing you're a naturist. He said, uh, in fact, I remember his response. He said, what was your first clue? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm a naturist too, and I always have been. He said, well, what are you waiting for? I said, well, exactly. So clothes came off, and we enjoyed each other's company. And we became pretty good friends after that. I did some work for him, through him, at the university uh, where he was employed, where my son was attending at the time. And a good time was had by all. Now, a lot of people would have walked into that situation, find a naked professor cutting the grass, and they would have run for the hills. They would have gone screaming. They would have gone for help. Why? It's just a human being cutting the grass, living his best life. This guy didn't have a care in the world. When he saw me, it wasn't oh boy, I should have thrown some clothes on before he came over. No, it was just, hey, how you doing? And we had a great conversation. And that really is what naturism and close free living is all about, at least to me, just enjoying the joys of what life brings. I had a similar experience uh, with a woman. Uh, my daughter was in need of a car. She had become of age where she was driving. And, well, I need my car and I'll have to get you a car. And so I was looking for a, a good used car, found one in the paper. And called this woman up and said, uh, you know, tell me the story on the car. You know, how many miles and all that good stuff. So she filled me in. And uh, she invited me over to look at it, obviously. I was going to take it for a test drive and all that good stuff. And I showed up, and she had on the smallest pair of shorts that I've ever seen a human being wear. And uh, a top that didn't leave much of the imagination either. And I thought, well, this is a little inappropriate. She doesn't know me, and she's dressed like a, a sex kitten. It turns out uh, she was a personal trainer, and she had clients in her home. In fact, I could hear them lifting weights in the back room and running on treadmills and all that good stuff. And so she said, I'm with clients right now. Uh, you know, they're working out, and, but here, here are the keys. Go take it for a test ride. And then as I was leaving the house to take it for a test ride, she said, by the way, you're lucky. I usually don't have any clothes on around here, so count your blessings. And I thought, well, that's an odd statement. Took the car for a test ride and brought it back and, you know, said goodbye. Thank you. I'll, uh, you know, I'll, don't call me. I'll call you type of thing. And checked out other cars you know, that day and then, uh, for a few days. And I realized, you know, the car that she had was the best deal, the best car for the best price. So I wanted to get it if it were still available. And I called her and I said, you know, this is uh, Frank. You know, I was at your house the other day and took your car for a test ride. Is it still available? She said, yes. And we agreed on a price. And I said, okay, I'll be there tomorrow. And I'll uh, have the insurance and all, you know, registration, all that good stuff. I'll have everything I need. I'll give you the money. You give me the keys and we'll make the transaction. So I showed up and she came to the door. And you probably already know how she came to the door. Uh, absolutely nothing on and as nonchalantly as saying, would you like a glass of water? She said, hey, come on in. Uh, I have the keys right here. And we conducted the whole transaction with her clothes free. And so I actually asked her, I said, are you a naturist? Is that why you don't have any clothes on? She goes, yes, I hate clothes. I don't like living in clothes. I only put them on when I have clients here. And as you can tell, 
I barely put them on then, but yeah, I'm a naturist. And I said, well, thank you and congratulations. I am too. I've been a naturist since I was born. And she said, well, it doesn't look like it. It looks like you have your clothes on, <laughs> which I did. In fact, I had a really nice and semi-expensive suit on. I was coming from work. And she said, if you want to experience a naturist clothes-free life in my house, go ahead, and I'll get some iced tea, and we'll go over the paperwork. So I did. Now, to the average person on the street, that sounds weird as heck. Sounds like I went over this woman's house. She was naked. I got naked. And, oh, boy, 4th of July fireworks, New Year's Eve, wild sex galore. No, not at all. That's not what happened. It wasn't the expectation. It certainly wasn't what I was into, and thankfully she was not either. Never came up in conversation. Just two people enjoying the clothes-free life as it was meant to be. She was no longer a personal trainer. I was no longer a reasonably high-powered executive. We were two people, clothes-free, enjoying uh, either iced tea or lemonade while going over the financial details of the transaction. I stayed for a while. And thanked her, got dressed, of course, and uh, took the car and never saw her again. I did call her a few days later and said, you know, I uh, enjoyed our time together. And the car so far is working out really well. And then I uh, offered her some things uh, in the naturist world. In fact, I gave her the name of that one park uh, I went to, I told you about. And she had not heard of it, so she thanked me for that. We had a good conversation. But I was very busy then, uh, working a whole bunch of hours, uh, raising kids, uh, married, so there was no opportunity, no even thought of, of going back and saying, hey, why don't we do this every day? No, because that's not what it's about. Naturism is not about picking people up and you know wheeling and dealing every day after work and whipping your clothes off and having lemonade. It's just enjoying the clothes-free life. And that's what I want for you. And once you try it, once you get there, it removes all boundaries, it removes all nonsense from your life. You are listening to Naked, Nudists, and Naturists. And we want you to visit our website, nakednudistandnaturist.com, and also send us an email about anything, questions, tips, your story, nakedforevermore at gmail.com. That's nakedforevermore at gmail.com. Let's go to our uh, correspondent today, uh, Lisa Monroe, who we are assuming is alive and naked. Uh, Lisa, good morning. Are you alive and naked? As always, I am. Is there any <laughs> other way to be? No, no. You, you have to be alive. That's, that's key. But uh, why have clothes on? It just makes no sense, right? None at all. None at all. Ne- never oh. liked them. Always ripped them off when I came home. Sometimes still in a T-shirt if it was chilly, but for the most part, didn't even bother with that. Yeah, well, I I was even crazy enough when I was a kid. I haven't done this in my adult years because I like to think I've matured a little bit, although (laughs) many people would disagree with that. But Perhaps. I used to go out in the middle of winter and just extra naked, dive in the snow and roll around. Not for long, you know, five minutes or less, and I'd come back in. And I don't think anybody ever saw me, and probably just as well. They might have made an appointment with me at the... uh, a psych clinic, but uh, it was great you know, just being outside in the winter uh, naked. Well, I have to admit that I one time lived in a, in a fairly remote um, house, had a lot of acreage around it, mm-hmm. and I might have done that, gone out in the snow, and <laughs> I did put on keep on shoes. I'm not, yeah. not completely stupid, but yeah. um, did go out and kind of run around in the snowflakes in the cold, and, and I did not last five minutes I lasted maybe two minutes before I ran back inside but but that was kind of fun but I also love to go outside in the rain in the warm Mm. summer rain Mm -hmm. that is just the coolest thing ever talk about communing with nature that's communing with nature when the rain's coming over you yeah speaking of which uh, a little bit about rain I had an incident and we want to talk about nudist clubs today but uh, one quick story Uh, recently I went swimming in my pool, and there were some neighbors in uh, you know, down the way a little bit, and I thought, you know, it's possible they could see me if they look at the perfect angle. So I threw a suit on, mm-hmm. and I went in the pool and swam a little with my bathing suit on, and I got out, and I just felt yucky, you know, all yeah. wet, and the suit's yep. clinging to me. I thought, I got to get this thing off, and I don't ever <laughs> want to do this again. So 
I, I'm guessing you're the same way. Oh, absolutely. I, I love like getting in a hot tub with nothing on, you know, I don't like swimsuits there. And like you said, they get wet and they cling and get sand on you and the sand right. gets trapped. And when you're naked, you know, you just brush the sand off, you dry and brush the sand off and you can go with a yeah. suit on. You're like, for hours trying to get that last grain of sand out. So um, there's a lot of reasons to be naked, but yes, I don't, it's just something about being in that water and floating and, and every, it feels like your entire body is floating. It's then you're not confined. So it's really wonderful. All right. Now about nudist resorts or naturist resorts. Uh, I've been to them before. And I'm going to ask you in a moment if you have, but To me, the best one, and I've never been there, so I'm just going by what I've been told and what I've read and heard from others, is uh, Bear Oaks. It's uh, operated and owned by Stefan DeShane. He's been on the show, uh, or will be on the show. Uh, He owns Bear Oaks uh, near the Toronto area. But not only is it a naturist place, it is not clothing optional. If you go there, you must get your clothes off or, or don't go or you have to leave. But he also requires that his staff be nude all of the time as well. So... Somebody walks up and they're a little apprehensive or nervous. Do I really want to do this? And they're met by naked people. It's like, yeah, I guess it's okay. So to me, that's the best way to run a club. Now, have you been to a nudist or naturist club before? I have been and not to one like that because there were some people who were dressed and people kind of coming and going in different, different clothing. I think they also let new people who haven't been there before kind of wander around a little bit and get the, the feel of it. This is not something that you can ease yourself into necessarily. I mean, I right. guess you can talk yourself into it, but really and truly, once you make the decision, just take the clothes off and go because mm-hmm. that's, you know, get that that instantaneous little fear that you may have by going, Oh my God, I'm naked in front of all these people, get it over with. And then once you do that, you'll realize no one really cares. They're there to enjoy themselves. They're there to, to, you know, to have friendly conversation, to play volleyball, to, you know, lay on the, by the pool or whatever lake or whatever that's there and, and just have a good time. Yeah. I went to a, a couple in particular. Now one, when I got there, I got there when they opened in the morning, like nine or 10 in the morning on a weekday. And I figured there'd be, you know, 50,000 people there where there was literally nobody there, you know, nine, nine in the morning on a Thursday or a Wednesday, just not much action. And so I walked in, I was like, well, there's nobody here other than the, the workers. And uh, there was a lady who came out to clean the pool and she was dressed. She had a bathing suit on with a t-shirt over that. And I didn't have any clothes on. I was sitting by the pool and, you know, I, I talk to her for a bit, you know, and having fun cleaning the pool, you know, small talk. And I said, by the way, isn't this a nudist resort? She goes, yeah. I said, you do realize you have clothes on, you know, kind of being funny. She goes, yeah, you're right. I, I shouldn't. So she took her shirt off, took her top off and uh, cleaned with her, um, the bottom of her suit on. I, of course, I made a comment on that. I said, you realize you still have clothes on <laughs> and it's a nudist resort. And, you know, I was a little nervous. Like, am I supposed to be naked here? Cause she's not, and there's nobody else here. This felt kind of weird. And then she did take her bottoms off, finish cleaning the pool. And then I actually felt relaxed, not sexualized or all right. Now she's yeah. got everything off. It was okay. We're both naked, enjoying yeah. the sun. And, and she was cleaning the pool and I was going to dive in the pool at some time. That's when it really comes all together, isn't it? And that's, I think, the, the fallacy of, of what people have a, about naturism is that it's not about the sex part. You know, that that. That can happen clothed or unclothed. It doesn't matter. Right. It, this is about being yourself and being mm-hmm. free and not having any barriers to, you know, you don't have to wear a designer suit and someone's in ripped blue jeans. There's there's right. no connotation as to who you are and what you are in the rest of your life. This You're just you. And I think that is a something that we don't get to have very often. We play roles all the time yeah. with, you know, who we are and where we are and how we behave. And at this point in time, you, you get to take your clothes off and you're just you. And yeah. it is relaxing. You know, I've heard of Bear Oaks. And that is some place that, um, in fact, I even checked their, their website out once because someone had mentioned them to me and, I was very impressed because it's a beautiful place. And on top of that, everybody was naked. I mean, I saw the pictures of people behind the counters and they're just naked as can be. And that's got to be reassuring, especially to people who aren't as comfortable doing it. Yeah. When I later around noon or so on that particular day, and that was Mm -hmm. the first time I'd ever gone to that particular resort. 
uh, the two owners there, a husband and wife, and they both ended up uh, getting naked. And they'd walk around, they'd talk to people, and I went in, they have a little store there, you can buy snacks or water, mm-hmm. and I went in and she said, oh, you can't be naked here uh, because of the uh, some uh, law with uh, a board of health, and she said, you have to wear something in here. Mm-hmm. Even if it's a long T-shirt or a towel wrapped around, you got to wear something. I thought, well, shoot, what kind of place is this? No, Absolutely. Kidding. Shame on those health laws. Yeah. The other one I went to the same summer, all of the workers were clothed. It was a much bigger place. Every worker was clothed with matching T-shirts and shorts. And I noticed the first one I went to where everybody ended up being naked, I just felt very comfortable and relaxed and enjoying nature. The other one where all the workers were clothed, you know, they always stop and talk to you, you know, as you're at the pool or walking around. I always felt kind of like I was being judged. And that's the absolute one thing you don't ever want in naturism, right? That, that You're supposed to eliminate all that. That's the purpose of naturism, right? Absolutely. You're not supposed to feel that way. That's, yes. you know, the, that, that makes, that creates a, a feeling of no self-confidence in the person who's there. And, you know, if you have clothed people walking around looking down on you because you're laying on the beach, you know, or you're laying in a chair or you're sitting having lunch, then you do suddenly feel like, oh, they're looking at everything they're not supposed to be looking at. And Mm -hmm. it's, no, I don't, I think, I actually think maybe the staff being not clothed is probably much better because then you have a, a real feeling of camaraderie within the community. Yeah, and that's a big part of naturism, and you mentioned it earlier, taking away all those barriers like a really fancy three-piece suit and shiny shoes or a, a, you know somebody who uh, works in construction are going to be dressed differently. Well, now you're dressed the same. There's no I'm better than you because I have a, a nicer tie or a fancier suit. Now, you're just you. You're just now, you. Exactly. Now it's who you are, not what you yeah. are. That's right. I've heard a lot of people say you know a, a doctor or an attorney will be sitting – right next to somebody who doesn't even work or, you know, works at McDonald's or something. And nobody knows. They don't know he's Dr. So-and-so he's a McDonald's worker because you're naked. You're all equal now. Exactly. And no one should care. That's right. That's a very good point. Well, always good to talk to you. We're talking to Lisa Monroe, our uh, regular correspondent on the show. And Lisa, you do have to do us the one favor that you promised to do off air, and that's you're going to stay naked all day, right? I am staying naked all day long. No plans to go anywhere. <laughs> Good. Well, okay. <laughs> Be your best and naturist self. Absolutely. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Absolutely. And you stay naked too. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. Talk to you next time. Bye, Frank. And that's our naturist, naturism correspondent, uh, Lisa Monroe, does a terrific job uh, living the life. I've been a naturist from birth on. She's been a naturist for about the last 20 years, but had no problem being naked before that, any chance she got. She just didn't consider herself a naturist. She didn't go to clubs. She didn't go to nude beaches. She didn't engage in social nudism or social naturism. She was just naked at home all the time or naked on her balcony when other people couldn't see her or naked with her husband at the time. Uh, But she was not, in her mind, not a naturist, but she certainly is now and has been uh, for the last 20 years. And she's working on a number of reports for you, so stay tuned every single week. We will have a segment with our naturism correspondent, Lisa Monroe. You are listening to Naked, Nudists, and Naturists, and we want you to visit our website, nakednudistandnaturist.com. Easy to remember, nakednudistandnaturist.com. And check out all that we have for you. We're building the website little by little. We're putting all the episodes on there for now. But also on there you can find our email address. And yes, we do want to hear from you. How do you like the show? What does the show mean to you? Tell us your naturist story. Tell us about the time that you decided to take the plunge into naturism and you never looked back because you realized the joys of it. And from time to time, we will read some of those individual stories if we have permission to do so, or I will read them without your name if you prefer that. But we do want to hear from you. If you have any questions for us, we'll do the best we can to answer them. We don't consider ourselves experts on naturism, but we have delved fully into it, and we understand a lot more uh, than the average person on the street because we've been living the life uh, for so long. 
Well, let's get to part two now. I remember last week we talked to Renita Westall, uh, a British naturist, a naturist from the UK. She and her husband go to their naturism club just about every single weekend and spend as much time uh, clothes free as possible. So let's get to it uh, right now. Part two of my interview with Renita Westall. Now, a couple of things you, you shared with me off air. I just want to ask you about these. Uh, you do a lot of singing in your life. You're, you're a vocalist to some degree. I, I won't ask you to sing on the show today. <laughs> maybe maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> Set up the backing. <laughs> yeah. But even at your club, your naturist club, you sing in the club. So you're basically on stage with no clothes on singing, and the audience has no clothes on either. Do I have that visual correct? Is that what goes on? Yes, that is, yes. I, I sing naked, yes. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, I can tell you I just, about half of our audience just passed out. They probably hit their head on the floor. I hope they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> because, again, I, I know a lot of people who will tell me, I went to the doctor today and I had to take this off and he had to look at my whatever, and they're just mortified, let alone purposely taking everything off and getting on stage and singing, which is another emotional uh, excursion. How do you do that? Is it just, I'm guessing it's fairly easy for you, but maybe yeah. advice to some other people. Hey, how do you take your clothes off and get on stage and sing? I don't think about it. You know, I, I just don't think about it. Uh, I'm not good with my body, but I still get out there and enjoy nitrous. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing special, but I just love the atmosphere. I just love, larking about and and just enjoying myself and having no clothes is just an extra uh bonus for me it, it's it's just lovely yeah yeah i had read uh there's a singer out there i'm sure you've heard of her lady gaga oh yes I, I don't know much about her i've heard a few of her tunes but i don't follow her career but she has said that she actually when she records in the studio she records with no clothes on because she just feels more in tune with nature, more in tune with the lyrics, no distractions, including clothing. I'm guessing that makes sense to you to some degree, right? Yeah, very much so, yes. It's a, it's a lot better when you're naked than it is dressed. Well, okay, so why is that? I guess that's the question. Um, I just feel at ease. It, it, it's just very relaxing for me. I just get in with the flow it's just uh, really nice whereas when I've got clothes on and I get up on stage I'm really really nervous oh okay that's interesting yeah yeah now have you done that recently uh, clothes on and singing in front of people yes yes in, in um, other clubs or yes there's a big where where we go uh, to karaoke there's big yeah. stages we get up on and uh, sing to the audience like it would be a show Okay. Now, I am not a psychologist, uh, nor do, have I ever played one on TV, but I have to ask this question then. <laughs> I, I'm going to count on you to provide a, a quality answer here. So you get on stage and sing with clothes on, and you're nervous as heck. You get on stage to sing with no clothes on, and you're totally free as a bird. Can you take us through that and just explain uh, the dichotomy that's involved there? In my mind, I find people who have got clothes on are more judgmental than people that are naked. Ah, okay. Well, that, okay. So that makes sense to me. And the fact that the audience at the club also has no clothes on, that's an added benefit? That's correct. You're all the same. You're not judging each other. It's not a beauty contest. It's right. just a relaxing, enjoying the environment at the club. Yeah. Could you get on stage you have no clothes on and you're singing your heart out, but the audience has clothes on. Could you do that? Or is that like totally a foreign concept? No, I, in my mind, I could not do that because I would never, ever want to offend anybody. If somebody goes to the club and they see me naked, they know that they're there to see people naked. I get on stage where nobody is naked, just me. Then I find that offensive because somebody may not like me being naked. Well, let's say everybody has already approved it. They, they know what's going to happen. Then we have 10 karaoke singers. And nobody's going to have any clothes on on stage. And, you know, they pay money to get in. So they know you're not going to have any clothes on. I'm just looking, could you do that for yourself? Or you're on stage with nothing on. The audience is fully dressed. Could you still sing? Knowing you're not going to offend anybody. Oh, gosh, I've never done it. Uh, I can't imagine doing that. Uh, yeah. No. No. Yeah, that would be a totally different scenario entirely. It's yeah, it's a totally different atmosphere. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, and, and that's 
I mean, to me, I'm just thinking it through. I've never done that either, but that would be seem to be a more sexualized environment. I got people with clothes on, judging the people with clothes off on stage, as opposed to, hey, we're all in this uh, boat together. That does make a difference, right? That's correct, yes, yeah. I find people with clothes on, as I say, are more judgmental than people without clothes on. Isn't that amazing? I've told this story before, but there was a time, because I was a school principal for a long time and ran school districts for a long time, and I always had to be the man. I had to look like a million bucks. People counted on me to look like a million bucks. It was just a job. You know, you, you can't show up in a, a ripped up T-shirt and a, a, a dirty pair of jeans when you're the principal of the school. You have to look good because you don't know who's going to show up. Could be a parent, could be the mayor of the town. So, you know, you always have to look your best. And I got to the point where I could walk into a room, any room, even if people didn't know me, and I could take command of the room strictly, I think anyway, strictly by the way I was dressed, maybe the way I carried myself too. You know, I'd walk in with a full suit, a suit coat, tie, dress shirt, uh, suit pants, uh, decent shoes, you know, polished shoes. And I just looked like I was a guy in charge. I don't think I could pull that off if I walked into that same room with no clothes on. They'd be thinking, you know, like in a naturist club, oh, yeah, uh, there's a uh, Frank. What the heck? Uh, who cares? And <laughs> let's move on. Uh, n- not a big deal. But with clothes on, you can make it a big deal, right? And that, that's part of the part of the issue from your standpoint, right? Uh, you still get personalities that can take over the room. Okay. Um, th- there's compares that introduced. Uh, we have singers go there. And he can introduce uh, the singers in a professional manner. And as he gets up, everybody knows that he is in charge. Okay, but he did that through force of personality. I did it through force of clothing. Oh, (laughs) yes, yeah. I dressed better than everybody else because it was the role I had to play. Uh, Not because I was trying to be Mr. Fancy Guy. It's just that was the role I was expected to play. And so I remember this one time, I think I told this on the air before, I walked into a, a waiting room. It was at a doctor's office, but it was one of those where they had a million doctors, so the waiting room was big. I think it could seat like 75 or 100 people, and there were probably 50 people on the day I walked in. And uh, when you enter the door, you had to walk through everybody to get to the desk. Yeah. And as soon as I walked in, you know, people looked up, and people started sitting up straight. People were saying hello to me, nodding their head, waving. I thought, I'm just a patient here. These guys have no idea who I am. What is wrong with them? Then I realized, oh, yeah, the way I'm dressed. Not only did I have a full suit on, but it was wintertime, so I had an overcoat on. They probably thought, well, he must be like the leader of the hospital or the head doctor here. Believe me, I was neither. (laughs) So we we can play a lot of games with clothing, and you really can't do that if you're in a naturist club with no clothing, right? Oh, yes. I love dressing up. I love the glamour. I've been on cruises, and and I love all the uh, clothes as well. And I do love walking into a room and everybody looks. Yeah, I do like that feeling. (laughs) Now, you had told me uh, that you folks had a Halloween party of sorts at your club. Yes. And you basically showed up in costume and then the costumes came off eventually or they stayed on all night. How did that uh, take place? Uh, Well, I wore a a velvet long jacket that uh, covered me uh, and a hat. And at the end of the night, the jacket and hat came off. Okay. Yes, we got naked. (laughs) It yeah. gets quite warm in the clubhouse because you, if you're naked, you have to be warm. So yeah. you feel comfortable taking your clothes off anyway because it's warm. Yeah. And by Halloween time, it's starting to get pretty chilly in the UK, right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. We're talking to Renita Westall uh, today. She's uh, from uh, Great Britain, the UK, and she's a naturist. And she's explaining to us uh, what this is all about. And it's not what a lot of people think about. Uh, I've been told this a million times. If you go to somewhere and you're taking your clothes off, that means you're looking for action. Uh, That's not the case. And that's not the case with Renita. It's not the case with a lot of people who do the naturism thing. And Renita, to you, naturism is just basically you don't have any clothes on and you're enjoying life just as is. No pretense, no fancy dress, no fancy suit. Just I'm me, you're you, so let's have a good day. Is that a pretty good way to describe it? It's freedom and a lovely social life. Now, you don't entertain that way at home, right? Because you've already mentioned you're on a main road and you go out back and a lot of eyes can see you. So that's not something you do in the home with other people? You only do it at the club or beaches? Yes, I only go to the club, swims, events, beaches as a nitrist, yes. Okay, you also told me you're a moderator of sorts on a 
a naturist website. Maybe just tell us what that's all about. What goes on in a chat room on a naturist website? Uh, True Nudis. I chat on there to promote the club, to pr- promote naturism. And I've had a lot of women chat to me and ask me how they get into naturism. Mm-hmm. And I reassure them if they came along with me to a swim, event, club, that I could help them relax and enjoy naturism. They don't have to take their clothes off when they get there, but if they com- feel comfortable when they get there, they can. And it's a brilliant way to try nitrism through the chat room. They can chat to me and come along. And the same for single men. They have a hard job to get into uh, nitrous clubs uh, because the women feel intimidated by too many wi- too many men that arrive. So we do have to limit the single men that come along. But I try to promote nitrism for the single guys as well. Tell them about British nitrism, where they're welcome to go to the events, the swims, the the beaches with with a um, a British nitrism body uh, with their the people there. They will help them into nitrism, and it's a good way to start. Yes. Okay. Now I'm get well. Of course, you have to limit the number of uh, single males you mentioned, but. If those single males were just healthy naturists, you wouldn't have to really limit them down the road because because it would be known they're just coming to enjoy the naturist lifestyle. And what I've heard from other people is, you know, there are some men who will try to, you know, pretend like they're Mr. Naturist, but really they're just trying to look at uh, women with their clothes off. That's probably a tough thing to monitor, right? But if you catch it, you get rid of them. But I, I don't know how you catch it half the time if, if they're slick at what they do. You can spot it. I can spot it straight away. The body language, yeah, you you can you can tell the difference between a nervous male and somebody who is looking for a different outlet there. Yes, you can tell the difference. Okay, so based on what you know from your club and what you know from that chat room that you monitor and moderate, is it an equal number of men and women who want to try naturism, or is it more men or is it more women? On the chat room, it's mainly men, unfortunately, and not all of them are looking for nitrism, and that's why they have me as a moderator. Um, But anybody who wants help, I do give help, and a lot of people have come back to me and said, thank you very much, I'm now a member of whichever club I've recommended to them. So it's a good place to start for nitrism, but it isn't all about nitrism on that side, unfortunately. Okay. So, uh, so that's the downside that we sometimes hear about is people sneak into the naturism lifestyle for reasons other than the naturism. They're looking for a date tonight or a wife or a husband long term. Well, I, I guess I'm thinking of men because you mentioned mostly men. So they're looking for some gal to go out with tonight as opposed to the naturism lifestyle, right? This is correct. On that chat room. But as I say, if you come to the club or a swim or anything like that, then... It isn't a dating place. Yes, you may meet somebody that you connect with, but it's not. You don't go there purposely to meet somebody. And really, that's like anything else in life. If you go to a a regular, so-called regular beach and everybody has swimsuits on, you might meet somebody there that you have an interest in. You end up going out for coffee or whatever. And that's kind of the same way with the nature's lifestyle when it's done correctly. Is that safe to assume? This is uh, correct, yeah. But they, they seem to think that if you go to a nature's place, you're there to be chatted up. It's, it's, uh, the, the concept can get mixed up sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I can see why. I mean, you know, a, a guy shows up who's not fully fledged into the nature's lifestyle. He's just kind of looking for women, and he sees a bunch of them without their clothes on. It must be like a, a day in the candy store for, for this, a guy like that until he's caught and, and escorted out, right? Yeah, this is correct, yeah. You do get... Uh, men like that yeah so your husband is totally into this as well you mentioned you got him into it and he dived right in and he's fully supportive and and goes with you to the club uh, regularly yes yes Uh, he's very keen on taking me to the club most weekends yes Mm -hmm. does he uh, sing as well is he a vocalist yes Yes. he he got me into singing yes he heard me singing around the house yeah. Um, and then he uh, downloaded some songs onto discs. We practice at home and I felt, felt comfortable to go singing. 
Wow. Now, do you uh, get up on stage together and do uh, duets? Does he do solos or how does that work? We do do duets, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you mentioned earlier you go to karaoke events in the city, which means you have to have your clothes on. Does he go to those as well to sing? Yes, yes. It's uh, We go to a lot of um, textile uh, yeah. karaoke's, yes. Yeah. Well, that's uh, maybe we'll have to – you guys will have to make a record someday. I don't know if they call them records anymore, but you know, CD or download on Apple or whatever, <laughs> the two of you, what would you call yourselves? Uh, not Ranita and I think your husband's name is Don. It wouldn't be Ranita and Don. We got to think of a fancier term. What could that possibly be? Rosie and Jim. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not, not the nature of singing duo or something like that. <laughs> um, Oh, gosh, you've caught me on the hop there. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> uh, last question for you, then. If, if somebody wants to try this, you know, they're sitting home, they're listening to this interview, and uh, they've thought, thought about it before, like, you know, I'd kind of like to check a club like this out. It, it sounds safe. It sounds fun. And I've heard Renita talk about it, and she's fully supportive of me, you know, as a woman trying this under safe conditions. What do you recommend? They just go? Or do they find someone to go with? Or what's the first step? toward getting out of their house and actually going to a club and checking it out? They can contact British Naturism and they have a women's day. They also look after the women if they go alone. So British Naturism is the best source for anybody wanting to try Naturism. Okay, as British Naturism, uh, does that group have a worldwide uh, reach or do they focus strictly on the UK area? Uh, they do have um, events abroad. They tend to organise be- events abroad. Okay. Uh, and they advertise um, places abroad where you can stay. Um, so if they've recommended it, it's generally safe. Okay. So you're recommending things generally that you've heard about through the British Naturism. What are they called? British Naturism Society? Organisation. 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 Okay. And so you, you take recommendations from them, like let's say they're in uh, uh, Brazil. The British Naturism might be able to recommend a club in Brazil. Yes, they can. Yes. Okay. And then you'll pass that along to whichever person happens to ask, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. What about, uh, I said that was the last question a moment ago, but I happen to think of this, uh, people being nude in their home. You said you, you are. I think a lot of people are, many more than will admit to it, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? It, it, even if, uh, whether you're alone or whether you're with your husband or wife, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's kind of normal. Or, or am I wrong? No, I find it quite normal to be naked at home, but I do have to have my blinds closed. Yeah. But uh, I, no, I, I love being naked at home if it's warm enough. Yeah, it, it would just seem to make sense if you're a naturist, being a, you know one with nature in the home just seems to make the most sense. Can somebody, in your mind, can they go from, uh, you mentioned the word textile, can they be a textile person 24-7? They never take their clothes off ever unless they're showering, and then they quickly put clothes back on. Can they go from that to a naturist club and just let it all happen, or do you recommend, you know, you might want to be without clothes in your own home for a while to see what it feels like, or uh, what do you recommend along those lines? Well, my husband had never been naked at home or anywhere. He even slept in his underwear. Um, So I got him from that to naturism, so I presume it could happen to other people. Okay, well, he had you to guide him along, but I just mean, let's say there's a woman out there somewhere, and she's thinking, you know, I'm dressed all the time. I kind of like to try this club. Should she just sign up and go the next day, or should she walk around her house alone, blinds closed, with no clothes on, just to kind of get used to the sens- feelings or sensation of all that? Uh, yes, I presume it's better to go naked at home and get used to the idea. Yeah, okay. I can see that concept. All right. Well, very good. We appreciate you coming on today uh, to discuss naturism. We've discussed this before with some other people, and uh, both men, by the way. <laughs> it's nice to have a woman's perspective. And basically, what you said is what they said. Naturism is just enjoying nature, enjoying each other. And the big push now is for social nat- naturism, not just staying in your house alone. That's fine. Uh, but getting out there and enjoying the lifestyle with other people is the way to go. And you're recommending that, too? Oh, yes, it's much more friendlier at a nitrous place than it is a textile place. I go to a textile place and hardly anybody speaks to me. I go to a nitrous place and everybody greets me, makes me feel comfortable 
and it's a far better environment for me. Wow. See, I hadn't thought about that. Now, I know if I go to a beach and there are women there, uh, whether the, a woman by herself or with two or three women, I do tend to avoid them because I don't want to be, oh, there's that guy trying to pick up women on the beach. And so I never, I've never done that and will never will do that. So the fact that you're ignored on a textile beach, does that make sense? Am I along, am I at least in the zone with how a lot of people think? Like if I approach them with my clothes on, they're going to think I'm out for a date. Um, yeah, gosh, yeah, I'd be shocked if I was dressed and somebody approached me. Yeah. But um, people at the nitrous beaches um, tend to chat to each other. You're in the water and you're chatting and you uh, exchange where you get places you go and people you see and the experience you, you've you had at uh, resorts or clubs or events. It's it's a lot better environment, I think. And probably because you're equal at that point, you know, you're not way up there or way down there. You're all, you know, clothes free and just enjoying the lifestyle. And so you have a commonality even before you've said hello, right? That's correct. Yeah. All right. Well, great to hear your words of wisdom today about the subject of naturism. Let's do this again uh, down the road. We've been talking to Renita Westall. And uh, Renita, last question for you. If uh, anybody wants to get involved, what should they do? What's the first step? Should they contact British naturism? Should they uh, contact a naturism group in their own country? What should they do? Uh, British naturism is a very good place to start. They've got a website. And you can join and uh, go along to the events and see if you enjoy it. You haven't got to take your clothes off. Uh, or you can come to True Nudist chat room and I'll help you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that what, truenudist.com or something or org? You know, I uh, think uh, you just put in True Nudist. I think it would come up. On- yeah, 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 that's true. So True Nudist and they can check it out. Uh, but watch their step, right? Uh, at least how, how you've explained it before. There are some nefarious characters there. So maybe just kind of... Join it and then find you and you'll guide them along, right? Any moderator will help you. Okay. All right, very good. We've been talking to Renita Westall from Great Britain today uh, about the world of naturism. And uh, Renita Westall, thank you for everything today. Go out there and have a great day. We'll talk again soon. Lovely chatting to you. Thank you. The terrific Renita Westall. Uh, We thank her for her time on the show to discuss naturism and social naturism and what it is all about. You can go on the internet anywhere, type in naturism, that should help you out. And we thank Renita Westall for all of her time on this morning's show. And there you go, my complete interview with uh, Renita Westall. You know, she mentioned uh, the British naturism group a lot. I'll give you that website and uh, put it in the show notes as well, but it's bn.org.uk, bn for British naturism, bn.org.uk. And I mentioned earlier that uh, Stéphane Duchesne is the president of the International Naturist Federation. Well, British naturism is recognized by the International Federation as the official natural naturist organization in the UK. So you might want to check them out. That's what she did. She and her husband went online, looked up naturism, found British naturism because that's where they live. And that particular website gave recommendations. You can go here. You can try this. You can do that. And they tried various things, found their club that way, and they've never looked back. They actually rent a plot of land there for a trailer, and they visit uh, early and often and certainly as much as possible. So lots of possibilities out there. Just get out there and look up naturism, naturist living, and, uh, of course, this show. A naked nudist and naturist, and find out the joys of clothes-free living. Not inappropriate, not wrong, and definitely not sexual. Once that stuff enters into it, forget it. It's not naturism anymore. It's totally something else. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show today, Naked Nudist and Naturist, Episode 2. And we will be coming at you with a brand new episode every Saturday to encourage you in this lifestyle. So check out our website, Naked Nudist and Naturist.com. And also, we want to hear from you. Send us an email, nakedforevermore at gmail.com. That's nakedforevermore at gmail.com. Plan to join us for every single one of our shows here and have your clothes off when you're listening. We have our clothes off when we're broadcasting, enjoying the naturist life. We celebrate clothes free living for all. Remember to enjoy being naked and join us again for Naked Nudist and Naturist. 
We drop a brand new show every Saturday morning, so come back and join us. Have your clothes off when you do for Naked, Nudist, and Naturist. Have a great clothes-free day. Thank you.